Hi, this is A Minute of Overpass. My name is Eric and I make apps. Now this week I want to show you how to upload an app to the Apple App Store. Okay, so we've been doing these uh, daily videos over the past week, so you know a lot of a lot of talking. What I thought I would do today is do something a little bit more practical. This is something I've been meaning to do for quite a while. Um, is is to show the whole process of uploading an app to the App Store because when I first started out, this is one of the things I found the most difficult. And I know a lot of people who watch this channel are Android developers and haven't actually gone the full you know, iPhone, uh, the iTunes route or the app iOS route. So this might be. Um, this might be helpful if you're not going to do it now then in the future when you need to do it and it's the kind of thing that changes all the time it was it was really difficult for me to, to to see all the moving parts in it and i know if you're an iphone developer already this might seem very boring to you but uh for, for but hopefully it's useful for, for some people so and also it's kind of to show you like after all this talking over the last few days just to show you i'm not you know just a bunch of fluff or whatever you know uh, so anyway, so if you have a look at my screen, now the app that we're going to upload right now is one, we do this, I do this so often that it's just become, you know, automatic. Uh, so, but this is the app, uh, you know, that, we're, that I'm doing today. Uh, it's called Vietnamese Spy. We have all these spy uh, frameworks, so we, uh, you know, we, we built the, the code itself and we kind of, re we reskin it every so often. So this is the Vietnamese version. So our designer Sandy's done all new graphics, you know, we've got, uh, you go through, um, we've got all the language assets which we had professionally recorded. You, you choose uh, your destination on a map, uh, you go into it and you, you play this, uh, you know, you basically have to, you know, find the words and, and do all that kind of stuff. So that's, that's the game. So it, now if I go over to iTunes, now I can't just start, like with Google Play, I can just go ahead and start immediately creating uh, the, the app there. Now with, with the iOS, now this is what I found really difficult. You actually have to set it up in two different places. So uh, it's not so you can't just go into iTunes or into um, yeah iTunes Connect to start setting things up. You have to start off in the Apple Developer Center. You have to set up a provisioning profile first. So so you have to go to a completely different website. I don't know why this isn't all in one place. This is something that I've never quite understood. So what you have to do first is go over to developer.apple.com, log in, go over to account. And you need to set up a, well, if you haven't set up a developer profile already, you need to do that. So you go into certificates and profiles. And you need to set up a, a certificate, like a, a production certificate. So here's uh, the one I've done. You can set up to two actual uh, production certificates and you only have to do this once. Actually, you have to do this once a year because they expire every year. So you can see this one is mine, Overpass Limited, iOS distribution, it expires a year from now. So I just did that. So, uh, and it's pretty self-explanatory. You click on the plus up in the, up in the corner and you select, you know, you know app, app Store or Ad Hoc. Ad Hoc means that you can install it on test devices and still do things like, you know, push notifications and, and things like that on that uh, when you need to do that. But for this, so I've done all that already. You know, we, you know, we, yeah, hundreds of apps we're constantly going through. When I set up a new app on the App Store, you have to set up you have to set up two different things. I mean, every, each and every time. First, you have to set up an Apple ID. When this tells, you know, so every app has its own unique ID. Now, you know, with Google Play Developer Console, if you lose that key store, you're in a lot of trouble. This is one of the nice things about Apple is if you do, you don't have to keep track of like one single file that that key store file which you guard with your life. I mean, this is something that you can just go ahead and, uh, you know, if you lose it, you just go ahead and re-download it. So the first thing you need to do is uh, go ahead and, and register this new app ID. So here we go. And this name, you can give it whatever you want, Vietnamese Spy. Free, and then also give it the uh, the bundle ID. Now you can set up a wildcard app or an explicit app. I mean, it's best to do the explicit app, and we just kind of do the same thing all the time. Com .overpass .viet Vietnamese spy, and you can select whether or not it, you know receives push notifications, all this kind of stuff. But for this one, we don't have any of that kind of stuff, so we just go continue and then register. But that's not the end of it. So basically you set up an app, uh, but you can also have several provisioning profiles in order to distribute it. So you only have to do this once, but you have to set up a different provisioning profile. 
And you can set one up for, uh, you can do multiple ones for one single app, like you could have an ad hoc one uh, for testing, you could have your production one. So here, you go into here, you can see here, I've got you know all of our provisioning profiles and most of them are expired and that just happens every time your developer certificate expires. So uh, it happens once a year where you have to you know you have to go through and then like re you know you know edit all of them and download a new certificate. So in here you have to do the same thing again. Go into uh, what type of thing you want to do. You can do a development profile. I've never really needed to do that. Uh, unless I'm testing on a device, uh, but even then if you're connected to the machine, you don't really have to worry about that. So I go, I want to distribute to the App Store, and then I go ahead and select the App ID. And since I just set that one up, it should be Vietnamese Spy Free all the way here at the bottom. I go Continue, and then you uh, associate it with the certificate. And this is the one that's going to expire. This will expire on the 14th of December next year. I go ahead and select that. And then again, I give it another name. Again, this whole thing could be more streamlined. It's, you know, Apple is not the most user-friendly in terms of developer tools, at least I don't find. So I go Vietnamese Survive Free, Provisioning Profile, Continue, Download, click on that. It automatically puts it into my keychain. And now I could go ahead and create the App Store on iTunes. So this is the, the one bit where you have to actually, you can't do it within you know, iTunes Connect like you can with Google Play. You just go into the Google Play Developer Console. So now, sometimes it takes a few minutes. Uh, so here's my iTunes Connect. Yeah, by the way, they, for some reason in iTunes Connect, they, they keep telling me all these apps that they removed recently and there's no way for me to, re to, to uh, remove this message because I was kind of happy with the fact that they moved them. They're really old. Uh, so I go into My Apps and now I can go ahead and create that new one that I just created. So let's wait for this to load. So a lot of our apps recently created. I go in here, I select New App. And then here I can go ahead and select iOS. And again, Vietnamese. Now this is the one that's actually gonna, this is the name that's actually gonna be displayed on the App Store. So Vietnamese Spy, and then because I want some keywords in there, I'll call it Learn Vietnamese. I'll change these all here soon. Uh, now I choose my primary language. Now I always choose English US because that's my primary market. Most of my users come from English US, so I want that to be the primary, although I will fill out some other ones too. And then I choose uh, my bundle ID, which is the one I just created, be it to be spy free. Uh, and the only reason that shows up in that drop down is because I just created it. And then I create my SKU, which is uh, which we always put the same one here. I think this could be any unique value, but Vietnamese spy, Vietnamese spy, cool. And then. Okay, so then that goes ahead and creates it. Now I have my App Store page. So that whole process, you know, I entered the name several times. I suppose I could do different types of names all over the place, but I've never really seen the reason why you'd want to do that. And then uh, here I could start filling this in, which I'll do in a few minutes. Now the big thing that I need at the moment before I finish actually building my application is this ID here because I use that in terms of uh, creating the URL for my Rate Us button. So. What I want to happen is when they go through and click rate, I want to be go straight to the App Store page and that's what we need. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the video for a little bit while I go ahead and complete uh, creating that application and I'll show you through the upload process. Okay, so now I've built the application. I'm using Corona SDK, so it's a little bit different than you normally would use it with S Xcode. But because I've got that provisioning profile downloaded onto my PC, now I see a list here on Corona SDK anyway of all the provisioning profiles I have installed, all the current ones as well. Anyway, so then I could go through and build, and because I'm using Corona, it actually builds on their server. So we'll let that go for a minute. Normally what you'll do is you'll do it in, I, in Xcode. So you go into here, into the, they, they move it around all the time, each Xcode version. So you go into here and you put it under release and then you would select your profile here from the different profiles. And then when you do that, you'd go up to archive and then that will allow you to, to upload them. So let's just let that go a few minutes here while this builds. And it just takes a few minutes. Cool. Now, one of, now with Corona X SDK apps uh, are a little bit different than uh, Xcode. You actually do get the uh, the um, app application loader here, so you have to go ahead and choose your IPA file and upload it. It's very difficult. It's not like just like a select it. You have to use Apple's tools to do it. And this is one of the issues with doing iPhone apps is that you do need an app. Uh, sorry, you do need a Mac 
right? This is uh, like the, the whole reason I have a Mac. I mean, I was a Windows develop, uh, developer for, for years and years, and I had to get a Mac in order to actually do iPhone development. And that, you know, and it was for a while, it was like, it was like running with your shoes tied together. It was like you could do some things, but everything, it just slowed you down just because you're used to certain key key uh, layouts and stuff. But after a while, I got used to it. But yeah, I mean, it's one of the, the downsides of doing uh, iOS development. So we'll go ahead, we'll go ahead and upload that there. So once this uploads, it'll go to Apple and I'll get an email in a few minutes saying that uh, Vietnamese spy is completed processing. And then after that point, I could go through and start adding the build. So we'll let that go up. And that's done. Thank you. It's been approved. So now let's go back into our uh, our iTunes page. Now I've gone through this before in a previous video where everything is on iTunes. So let me just go through here and set everything up uh, just the way we always do. Uh, privacy policy is something that I use all the time. We just go and get it from another app. Um, let's just go open a new tab. All right. So I have the same privacy policy I use for everyone for you know, the uh, primary. You have the categories, you have two categories, the primary and the secondary. So let me just do, uh, edu I always do the same. I do education and I do games, educational games. All right, so that takes care of that. Click on save. Everything seems to be a bit slower when you film it, but it's uh, you know constantly going. So I go to pricing and availability. This is gonna be the free application, so go free. Uh, everything's good there and then I go to prepare for submission and then here I go ahead and add all the screenshots all the descriptions and usually what I do is I have a uh, I have a spreadsheet that I use which I put all my key keywords in and all the descriptions so I'll go ahead and, and fill this in uh, and be right back Okay, so I filled in all these fields here. You can see here I've got the, uh, the screenshots, I've got the description, I've got my keywords, I've got my marketing URL. I go through here. Uh, I've uploaded my icon, which has to be uh, non-transparency. I put in my uh, copyright trade information here uh, and my contact information for the reviewers if they come back. So it's all pretty standard, and I've also done my rating, which is similar to the Google Play rating. Uh, you have to answer just a few questions, but once you start doing it, you know what they all are, you just breeze right through it. And then the last thing I need to do is add my build here. Uh, so that's still, that's still processing, so we'll let that go. Uh, and because this is the free version, I need an in-app purchase. So I've only had one in-app purchase on this, which is to upgrade to the pro version. And so in order to do that, we go to features, in-app purchase, we click on in-app purchase, and like I was mentioning the other day, you can have consumable or non-consumable uh, in-app purchases. And a consumable purchase is like, like coins or something, something you use up in the course of play. So, so users have to keep using those. One day I'll do the consumable purchases, but this is just like an unlock type of thing. So it's just uh, a non-consumable. I go ahead and through and do create, and then I fill in the language for that, which is just pretty much you know upgrade to pro. Uh, let me just go through and and do that kind of stuff. So let's see. Uh, and the reference name is just for you, so when you see it in the reporting, you know what it is, upgrade. Uh, Vietnamese spy upgrade, com.com. And then this product ID has to be referenced within your code. So uh, this is the one you use within your code to actually unlock this level or this you know purchase. So this has to be exactly right. You can't get this one wrong. Com.overpass up. Vietnamese spy dot buy pro. Cool, and then pricing, you got the tiers here, so I'm gonna select, um, I'm gonna select tier, tier four, which is the ones we always do for this, and then localizations. Now, if your app is localized for different languages, you can go through and enter different ones for different languages, but I don't need to do that, so I just go upgrade to pro. And then, you know, unlock all categories. Categories and remove ads. Cool, and then, for some reason, and I never quite understood this, you need to provide a screenshot for the reviewers, 
And so I always, I always create one here. Let me just, uh, my desktop. Cool, so that's save. And the last thing, this is very important. This is something that I've missed out a few times that's really caused trouble. Not just in terms of rejections, but even trying to go back and fix it later, it's been a problem. So if I go back into App Store, because I've set up an in-app purchase, that has to be reviewed along with the build. So every time you, you know, change your keywords or your screenshots, uh, you, you, need to, you need to do new build and go through the, uh, through the review process. And that's the same if you add any new in-app purchases or anything like that. So let me just go back to this build here and attach both of those. So let's go down here. I go to in-app purchases. I need to attach that one that I just created, Vietnamese Spry Upgrade. And if this is done processing, yep, there we go. And done. Now everything is ready and to submit for review. And you just submit it. And you have to answer three questions here at the end which are, you know, like uh, related to the content. Do I have export compliance? Uh, is it using a cryptography? No. Uh, do I have any contents in there that I shouldn't have, like third-party content? No. And do I use an IDFA, IDFA identifier, which kind of identifies that user to that device? And yes, I do. The ad networks need to use that, so yes. And then they ask why you need to use that, and there's several things here, and I always say yes to serve advertisements within the app. And then, uh, you know, I, Eric, really confirm. And then submit. And now it goes, if all goes according to plan, it will go into waiting for review. There we go. Now within a couple days, I'll get some response back and, uh, and they'll do that. Now normally when I do this, I do these in bulk. So, you know, we, I must do this about, you know, three or four times a week and I'll do several apps at the same time. And I don't just do English. One of the things I do is I'll go through and use Google Translate or some other services and do different ones for different locations. And I mentioned this before, I'll also go through and create, you know, there's four different English ones. There's Australian, Canada, US, and UK. I'll go through and change keywords on those in the title. Like I said, when you, when you talk about this part right here, this bit here is the most valuable uh, real estate you have on this app. So this is going to be that your keywords there are going to be more valuable than they are in the keywords field or anywhere else. So hopefully that's been helpful. I know this has been really long. I've been meaning to get around to this for a while and I tried to do it as quickly as possible. I'm going to go through now and do the rest of the, you know, the pro version and the Mac version of this game. But, uh, you know, like I said, if you're going to release don't just release to Google Play. Think about iTunes as well. That means getting a Mac, and that means learning some of these things here, which you know, once you start putting out different apps, you do this again and again and again, and it doesn't take as long as, as you think it would. So hopefully this has been helpful in the future. If you need to release a Mac, sorry, an iPhone app, come back and, and check this one out. And, uh, and that's it for this week. Hey, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow on the Daily Overpass, and uh, that's it. Talk to you next week. Bye.